ability and also the ability to communicate with people. If you want to communicate a point, yeah. you know, and you can do it effectively, people will look past how the person look and they're looking and they're listening to what you're saying. And I think maybe that's that's probably the advantage that uh, the, the woman in the Philippines probably have over some of these other women, you know? Because there are a lot of men, there are some men too, a number of men who like Thai women too, you know? Yeah. They, um, I think I told you about uh, the, the same one from Indonesia was telling me she had a, she knew this guy from, um, from the Netherlands, Holland. Because she used to live there. Yeah. She, she was married to some guy and she lived in uh, in the Netherlands for a while. So she mm -hmm. met some people there. And this guy had a, a girlfriend in Thailand. And he was paying for her to go to college. He paid for her apartment in, in Bangkok and so forth. And uh, yeah, he, I guess he really loved her a lot, you know? And one one day he, he decided, oh, I'm going to go visit her. I'm going to surprise her, show up unexpectedly. <laughs> he showed up unexpectedly to visit the girl. And the, the Thai girl is living with another man. She's living with a, with a Thai man, you know, not even a foreigner. Because that's one thing about Thai women. A lot of them, sometimes, no matter what, you know, when in the end they go back, to, <laughs> they go they go back to their Thai men. You know that that that's it's like that, it's like that sound. Um, what the guy said, um, you know, all up upon a stony river, and he said, "Where no no matter where I travel, all the world, you know, my nah. this is where my heart is. I come back to, you know that old sound. Mm -hmm. You know that sound." What song? The song about Stony River, where he said, oh, where he said, all the world is sad and dreary. Everywhere I go, oh, darling, and my heart goes weary, oh, for the old folks at home. So when it comes to the Thai woman, yeah, they may have the foreign man or what have you, but in the end, they they want to come back to that Thai man, and the reason is that she wasn't with she wasn't like with uh, a Western man. She was with a Thai man, you know. So he was paying for her to go to go to school. I think university. He was paying for her apartment, and he comes to surprise her, <laughs> and she's living <laughs> she's living with a man with a Thai man in Bangkok in the place so they broke up so my friend the indonesian one she said you know what um you deserve a, a better woman than that you know and she said i'll i'll find a good decent indonesian woman for you that's what she told him i'll find you a decent indonesian woman and he said to her well no not really no thanks he said i'm gonna look I'm going to look and see if I can find me another Thai woman. See? So there's some men are like that, you know? Some men are really attracted to Thai women. Yeah. They don't want any other woman but Thai woman. Yeah. This was a guy from uh, from the Netherlands. Even though the Thai, even though the Thai woman was li living with, with another man or what have you, that's it. Yeah. And I know, I mean, I read different things, you know, because years ago, going way back to like the first time I went to Thailand and I used to read his Bangkok Bob blog. Mm -hmm. And um, he had stories like something like that. And like the Thai woman, you can you can have a girlfriend in Thailand. Yeah. And she would still have a, she would still have a boyfriend, like a, a Thai guy, you know, it's like, no matter how, Friday go whether they roam or what have you. They still like having that Thai man around. Yeah. Yeah. But the but the Filipino women are different though. They they're different. They're not like that. <laughs> you know, they're entirely different. 
that if you if you have a Filipino, if a guy has a Filipino woman, and chances are you cheating her well, you know, you send her to school, you you sending money to upkeep her to uh, for an apartment. The chances are very, very slim she's gonna be cheating on you with a Filipino guy, you know? I mean that'd be very, very unusual for that. Yeah. Yeah, very unusual. But the Thai woman will. More than likely. She will cheat. And yeah. Yeah. yeah very different. And I think it has to do with I think it has to do with the culture. That uh, the way they see themselves in Thailand, you know, because uh, what they pride themselves on is that they like. If you forget, like somebody said one time, a guy said that if you argue with a Thai woman and you argued with her about the toilet bowl he said if you if you have a, an argument and say oh you know this about the toilet bowl yeah. she would tell you that thailand was never colonized she would that's how she would uh, respond to you you arguing about the toilet bowl toilet bowl yeah she, you know what thailand was never colonized by the europeans yeah which has nothing to do with it so I think I think what it is the point is it's like a sense of pride, you know, when you look at all these countries in Asia, a sense <laughs> of yeah. Asia that were colonized by the by the Europeans, like the British, the French, uh, and so forth. And Thailand stood up because Thailand was able; they were able to make a deal, and they remain they remain like about one of the few countries in that part of the world that wasn't really colonized. So that's the kind that's the kind of uh, mentality I think that they have going in, you know, into relationship. That okay, we were not colonized, so why do I really need a, a foreign man, you know? <laughs> To live with or to be my boyfriend. Why do I need a foreign man? You know, my my uh, ancestors uh, didn't allow themselves to be colonized by foreigners. So, and I think I think that that kind of adds to that mentality, the way that they think when it, when it comes to men and relationship. I hear you. I think to me, in the in Indonesia, woman or Malaysia woman is pretty. I really think so too. I like I like the way they look in the news and I guess. They kind of mix with Palestinian people a little bit. It's pretty yeah. Yeah, yeah well, the, thing, the thing about the thing about the Indonesian woman that Indonesia is like it's uh like the most populous Muslim country in the world, something like that, you know? Yeah, same with Malaysia too. Malaysia, Indonesia, it's the same, a lot more. So I think, I think what it is, if you look at a lot of the Western, a lot of the Western men, uh, they're not really turned on by the Muslim religion. That's number one, you know? So that's a strike against them right there. <laughs> you know, because if, you, if you're dating an Indonesian woman, Chances are maybe she might be Muslim, you know, and some men are not, they, they, they may not really want to really go out on that angle. I mean, because like, I've chat with some, I've met some when I, when I was in Indonesia, you know, and uh, some over the years I chat with from uh, who were, I used to chat with a girl in uh, a place called Banda Aceh. That's like one of the strictest Muslim areas in Indonesia. Back in the, back in those days, before 2004, is before when I used to travel with her. That area, you, if you were foreigner, you couldn't even go in there in Banda Aceh. <laughs> then they had that earthquake, and the earthquake changed everything. The 2004 earthquake. Yeah, I'm uh, it was I think December 26, 2004. Yeah. And that's what changed Banda Aceh. But by then, yeah, I used to chat with her. 
And uh, she, she told me about that. And they have like the religious police there. It's very, very different. Um, and at the time I had a phone number and it was strange because I, you know, I used to mind down like places of people I chat with, parts of the world. And then when I heard Banda Ache, I said, wow, you know, that name sounds familiar, that place. And I checked the book. And yeah, I said, wow, I know somebody from Banda Ache. You know, how many people could say that? You know somebody from Banda Ache? Yeah. And then, so I called and I couldn't get through. And that earthquake was very, very devastating. And then um, eventually, like after two weeks, I called again. You know, I used to call before that, but I couldn't get through. And then one day, some she picked up the phone. She answered me. And I tell her who I am. And I said, you know, I've been trying to get through to you for the longest because I saw on the TV, like, all these people died from the tsunami, the earthquake. Mass, they were like mass graves, so many people, bodies. And, and I was just wondering if you're alive, you know? So I've been trying to call you yeah. to see how you are. And she told me, yeah, and she was so, so thankful, you know, because they were like cut off from the outside world. Yeah. And then... Um, she was happy, so I would I would call her like uh, maybe like every other day, you know, yeah. see how she's doing and so forth, and so forth. And then what happened? That area opened up, and then the um, like all these different groups, the NGOs, the United Nations uh, went in there to bring in aid. Even Bill Clinton, she was working for some company. She got a job. And she met Bill Clinton because at the time he um, he had some position with the United Nations, and he showed up there. And she told me, "Yeah, I met Bill Clinton." I said, "Oh, really? Yeah." She said, yeah. She met him. Met people from the Turkish Red Crescent and so forth. And then they started to build back up and so forth. You know. So yeah. then I said, "Fine. Well, you know." Now that I know everything is fine there, so I stopped calling. And one day, one day she asked me, she said, you know, I noticed you stopped, you stopped calling me. I said, yeah, because uh, everything is fine now. She said, yeah, well, I was wondering, uh, you used to call me all the time, see how I'm doing. And now all of a sudden, you know, you don't call anymore. I said, well, things are getting back to normal, you know. Uh, they're rebuilding in Banda Ache. Life is coming back. And if I keep calling you when things are going fine, you're going to think maybe I'm in love with you. <laughs> so that's why I stopped calling, you know? Yeah, that's why I stopped calling. But yeah, but that's the point. I mean, so yeah, she's a, she's not only a Muslim, but she's like one of these stricter type of Muslim, you know, where you, you you can't walk out with having a covering in your head a hijab they call it a hijab yeah. you have to have a hijab very very strict they have the religious police uh if if you walk if you walk outside and um you know your head is not covered or what have you the religious police will run after you yeah they run after you with a whip or something to beat you <laughs> you know, I mean, it's it's really something. So when, when I did go to Indonesia, she was asking me, she did ask me if I was going to go over there and visit her, you know, I, I, because I was there in um, 2015. I was in, in Indonesia. I went to Jakarta, then Bali. But no, I didn't go to Banda Ache because I say, first of all, by that time, you know, she got married anyway. When I knew her, she wasn't married. When I first used to chat with her, she wasn't married. So she got married. 
I think she got two kids. And um, the way things are, <clears throat> the way things are, you know, in, in Banda Aceh, you still got the religious police. So I'm saying to myself, you know, yeah, it'd be nice to visit you. I mean, like any other place, like where you have like, maybe like people are not that religious or that kind of stuff going on. I probably want to visit her, but the whole idea for me to go to Banda Ache and visit a woman who's um who's married, who got two kids, who has a husband, yeah, you know. Maybe maybe if I went to the Philippines, I can do something like that, you know. But in that part of the world, no. Can you imagine what they could probably could accuse me of, and probably with me? So who knows? So that's not the kind of place I really want to show up in. But Jakarta is okay. Jakarta, you don't have that. And Bali, Bali is definitely different. Because uh, Bali is Buddhist, believe it or not. Even though Bali is in part of Indonesia, but Bali for centuries, Bali has been a, a Buddhist area, which is very unusual. There's a history behind that. Entirely different. They practice Buddhism. So all this stuff about Muslims and so forth, all that doesn't apply at all in Bali. Yeah. Yeah. Not good. I think my Malaysia people is pretty. Malaysia people. Malaysia? No, in the end of Malaysia. Malaysia also has some strict Muslims too. Yeah, yeah they do. Uh, yeah, years ago, um, there was a girl from Malaysia, I used to chat with, and then she came to California. She worked in with au pair, and then she had a vacation, and she asked me if she could come. She wanted to visit New York. She'd never been to New York, and she knew I live here. So I said, yeah, you, fine, you could come. You could come here. I got a room. You can stay in your room. I can take you around. And she came, so we have conversation, and she told me she's how, how it is in um, in Malaysia. You know, they got very strict rules. However, the rules apply to um, the Malaysians who are like uh, who are Muslim, but she had to be Chinese. She was a Chinese girl, so. She didn't have that, she didn't have to deal with that. But in certain areas or what have you, you couldn't wear like certain, you know, like your dress, if you're wearing a dress or what have you, can't be short, you have to be dressed a certain way and so forth. And also in Malaysia, she told me that they always give preference to the, the Malay, the people, the the native people there, because the Chinese people move there. The Chinese people are not native to there. So that was a problem. She said, no matter how, you could be smart, you could be a smart person, you can get good grades or what have you, you're not going to get the job like that. Yeah, so she had grievances <laughs> being there. And that's where she was born, in Malaysia. And she said the um the the Malay, in a way that gave the Malay a reason, you know, they could they could slack off, they could be a bit lazy or what have you, and they may still get a certain job, just being Malay, like they put a certain percentage of the jobs for them, or what have you. And and that's one of the reasons Malaysia was so corrupted with the last prime minister they had. Um, the one who 
you know, had all this jewelry, his wife had jewelry, millions of dollars worth of jewelry and so forth, because he could he could count on the the Malay voting for him, the majority of the people. And they they were always sure to, to be in office to win the election. So they had that going for them. But eventually, I think the people got fed up in uh, Malaysia of the corruption. So are you working tomorrow? They are. Uh, Matt, my son's going to be here tomorrow. Oh, you'll be off. Yeah, tomorrow my day off. Yeah, so there's no school in Maine, right? No school for Hawaii, my yeah. Everybody's still off. Yeah. Yeah, due to the coronavirus. Yes, sir. Yeah. Even even the shops. Um you can't you can't go in in a shop and sit down and eat at least in New York. Like if I want to go in a restaurant, no. Now you said you you were supposed to meet a guy uh, from Tinder. You were supposed to go meet him for coffee. Yeah, I told you today earlier today. Yeah, well here in New in New York you can't in New York currently you can't go meet somebody for coffee in a shop. You know that you can't go sit down in a shop. Um, the they won't allow that. You can only have takeout. Oh, I see. Yeah. Isn't that how it is in Maine? No, Maine, you can you, you can go out of for and well. So if you if if you want if you wanna go to um if you wanna go to a restaurant yeah. in Maine, you can go sit down and eat? Yeah. You sure about that? Yeah, some McDonald's they open here, but Watchtown like a really Watchtown you have. Because that was a whole point be, be behind social distances where you 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 know you couldn't really go in and sit down and with a bunch of people and eat like how you could go to Denny's restaurant and sit down and eat. You couldn't do you couldn't really do that. Yeah, it looks like you're busy over there. I was busy, yeah. Wow. I put some uh I put some of the warm water from the the heat pad by my knee. The swelling went down a bit. Mm -hmm. I hope tomorrow I don't have any anything swollen. And any pain? Oh, my mom, yeah. I, yeah. Have my, I, I have my foot pain for a little bit of a while now. So you had your what? My, my foot, I've been walking a lot sometimes. Pain. Yeah. I put some, yeah, I put some ice and hot on it. Yeah, I'm going to take two, I'm going to go take two Tylenol because, um, so in the night, I don't have any pain. I could sleep well. Yeah. Yeah. 